Hey everyone, um, all you guys that are excited with the new NES Mini and the release of Hakshi 2.12 today. I've seen a ton of activity happening on Reddit and GBA Temp. There's a lot of questions out there. Um, I've been on your side with all those questions and trying to figure this stuff out and it can get pretty complicated. So I'm hoping that I can help answer at least some of your questions. I know that there'll be stuff I'll forget to do in this tutorial video. Um, it's actually my first tutorial video, so if it sucks, that's on me. But anyway, let's get into it. Lots of things going on here. It's an exciting time to be a NES Mini owner, and I want to try to help you guys out so you can get the most out of this system, because uh, Cluster and Mad Money have done amazing work. Big shout out to Cluster and Mad Money. Mad Monkey, oh my god, Mad Monkey. I'm so excited I can't even get his name right. So big shout out to Cluster Ed and Mad Monkey. And let's dive right in. So first off, I'm assuming you've already downloaded the uh, latest version. As you can see here, it's version 2.12. Um, I've already got my whole thing set up. Didn't really feel like doing a fresh uh, setup here, but I can show you what I did to get to this state. So I've been using the release candidate. I'm sure some of you guys have been using 2.11. And you've got games and ROMs. You've already figured out what your top ROMs are. And you really don't feel like adding those all over again from scratch. There's an easy way to do that. So what you're going to see here is I've got two folders. Uh, one is the latest general availability 2.12. The other one is the release candidate, the older version. So let's just open that up. In the old version, if you've already flashed with 2.12, created your custom kernel, done all of that, you're going to have a dump folder and you're going to have a games folder. Those folders will not exist, or at least won't have all the content in them in the new GA. So my recommendation is to transfer your dump folder over to 2.12, transfer your games folder over to 2.12. What that'll do for you is when you open up the new 2.12, all of your games will be in there already. Uh, and when you go to flash the first time, it won't ask you to dump the original kernel. If you don't move the dump folder over and you go to flash, you m will likely get an MD5 mismatch, size mismatch error. That's happening because your kernel that you have on your system is not the original one, and it's checking the MD5 checksum against the original kernel, causing that error. You can avoid that error altogether by copying the dump from your previous hack sheet to the newest build. Uh, so that gets that out of the way. That's, gonna, that's how you can transfer that kernel over and your previous games. The next thing is, you guys are all excited about being able to play Super Nintendo, Sega, N64, you know, making this thing more than an NES emulator. To do that, you're going to need the RetroArch mod. There's a modular system now where you can add all kinds of different mods. RetroArch does not come pre-packaged with um, Hakshi when you download it. You need to download it separately from this GitHub site. Okay? When you go to this GitHub site, I hope I have it open. I do. Great. When you go there, there's going to be a bunch of things to download. If you want to keep it simple, you can just download RetroArch.hmod. It's already prepackaged and everything's bundled together. But I know a lot of you want to change the default uh, N64 core, which we're going to get into next. So in order to do that, you need to download source code. And then if you want RetroArch as a standalone game uh, within your NES GUI, you're going to need to download CloverApp.zip. I've already got those downloaded. Uh, you can see I've got them right here. Okay. When you open up the Clover Arc, uh, Retro Arc Clover, you'll see you know, everything's in a folder. You don't work, want this folder. What you need to pull out of here is RetroArc.hmod. Okay? Pull this out of here. I'm going to copy it. Eh, you know what? I'll just pull it over. But grab that RetroArc hmod. And inside your Hakshi 2.12, go into User Mods and drag it over. You can see that I have a folder here called RetroArc.hmod. I'm going to close out this other window. We don't need that anymore. Try to get some crap out of the way here. Alright, great. So out of that zip, you now have RetroArc.hmod. In here, whole bunch of files. It gets kind of crazy. You're going to want to go into bin. Okay? In bin, you will not see this Manolito. Um, credit to a gentleman on GBA temp for this name. You can call it pretty much anything you want. I don't know what Manolito means. It's probably some other language. If anyone knows, put it in the comments. But what we're going to do here is you're going to copy N64. This is what tells 
and I'm going to open, you can Word or Notepad, it's fine. This is what tells uh, the GUI to launch the core. And as you can see, this is Muppin 64 Plus core. The N64 games aren't really running that well in that core right now. Uh, we're going to want to change that. So you're going to make a copy of this file, okay, and then rename it to, for purposes of following along, just rename it to Manolito, okay. When you do that, uh, why are you not defaulting? Open up Notepad. You can see that I replaced to Gloopin. So just to show the differences between these two, let's open these both here. I changed Muppin 64 Plus to Gloopin 64. Okay? And that'll be important in a moment. So make sure you do that. Hit save. You'll have a new file in user mods, retroarch hmod bin, monolito. Alright? When you do that, Let's go back to our hack, 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 um, Hackshi. It's not an easy name. Go to Hackshi. Open that up. You'll go to Modules. It'll say Install Extra Modules. You'll see RetroArch in here. Okay. You're gonna. I'm not gonna install it for the sake of time, but you'll install it. You'll hit OK, and it'll flash to your NES. All right. So now, how do you actually change the core? What you'll see is I have a few different N64 games in here. Let's go find one here and 64 just go to Super Mario 64 and if you've installed Super Mario 64 on file add more games what you're going to see is here it would say N64 if it said N64 that means that the system is going to launch Muppin Core which we don't want it to do so just change that to Monolito or whatever you called your file and when you flash Super Mario 64 will now launch as Monolito so I have a couple other games that weren't running too well so I'm going to change those as well uh, let me see what did I have on here Banjo-Kazooie ran terrible on Muppin so let's go Manolito hope I spelt that right let me double check pardon me I just want to make sure I spelled that right Man, no, nope. See, that wouldn't have worked. Then I'd have to reflash the whole thing again. Man, no, oh, oh, be very careful with everything you do. Unfortunately, you have to f do full flashes now. I know that he's looking to do um, quicker flashing, where it's only going to do the change log instead of a net new flash from scratch. So we can look forward to that in a future update. All right, so we've covered transferring files. We've covered installing RetroArch mod. You got to download it from this website. Add Muppin as your launchable core for N64. You're going to do that by adding a file, copying the N64 file. Damn it, default app. All right. And changing this to Gloopin64. Then you're going to go to Modules in the app and do Install Extra Modules. Click RetroArch. It does not stay clicked for some reason. Even if you already have it installed, which I do, it doesn't stay clicked. Hit OK. It'll flash. So now the question might be, how do I uh, customize my folders? All right, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I didn't do this in the best order. What you're going to want to worry about is adding games. Um, sometimes it doesn't automatically pick the correct bin for it when you add games. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So see if some games, it'll say, like let's pick uh, Contra Hard Corps, right? This is a Sega Genesis game. It won't by default say this bin slash MD for Mega Drive, and I'll show you. So if I go here and I add more games, another thing you're going to know when you go to look for your ROMs, if it's not a Nintendo ROM, it won't default to all files down here. It's going to say NES files and applications. So you're going to need to change this to all files. You're not going to see your ROMs. So I'm going to click Sega. It's going to pull all my ROMs. And we're going to add Contra Hard Corps, just so you can see the difference if you add. And the other thing that's weird is it lets you add multiple instances of the same game. Uh, maybe if you wanted to have one that had Game Genie uh, hacks on it and the other one doesn't, that could be an option. But let me add this in here, and you'll see what happens. So see how it says Path to your app? If you left it this way, this game would not launch. You need to change it like this other one that says MD. All right, so I'm just going to delete this. 
extra. Delete that. That's gone. But you're going to have to say MD. Genesis seems to be the only one that's doing this. It might be the bin extension on the, the ROM that's not um, having it um, auto-find it as an MD. But other than that, small little thing to have to worry about. So that's adding a Sega game, for example. Um, so let's get into some other stuff that's going on here. Uh, before we do that, let's go into some settings. For settings, um, you know, I like to use AutoFire. He added new settings for AutoFire right now, which require you to hit Select and AB to enable AutoFire. Reason being is if it just automatically did um, XY on the Classic controller for AutoFire, it can mess with some of the emulation, and now your X and Y buttons will act as A and B buttons. So my recommendation is to select use the Select AB to enable AutoFire. Any other things we should worry about on here? Ah, uh, yes. So if you want to set your games to like all your Segas are in one folder, all your Super Nintendos, all your 64s, like do it by console, you got to select custom in page folders, select custom. Okay? So I already have that selected here. So let's go in and mess around with folders. So I've, I've decided to not check my original 30 games. If you want to keep them, that's on you, but it might mess the way the look and feel of your um, GUI is when you're done. So let's do synchronize games. And you can see that I've done everything by an in, by console. Okay? And I also have custom artwork. All this artwork was done by using Google. Um, if you like this artwork, I can share it to you, zip it up or something like that, make it easier. But what you'll do is you're going to click in the little main icon, menu icon box, and pick what you want. So I got a whole bunch of different icons. And I kind of like them because they all look the same, this look and feel. So that's how you do that. Well, what if you don't have any folders? You just got all the everything showing up, and you have no folders. What you do is you right-click new folder, okay? And you type the folder name, whatever you want. All right, I'm not going to do that right now, but it works just like a regular file directory. You can even have folders within folders. So you can see with Nintendo. I've got folders within folders. Okay? Folders within folders. You can batch select. So let's just say I wanted to like move all these out to the main folder. I can select them all, drag them to the home menu. Now they're on the home menu. Right? If I want to move them back where they belong in the S to Z, select them all over here, drag them, and there they are. Okay? So that's folders. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. So how did I get these folders? Where do I put this in these images so they show up here? It's a great question. Where you're going to put those is where it says folder images. You're going to want PNG icons. Uh, PNGs don't have backgrounds on them if they're um, developed properly. So they look good when they're uh, in the system. If they're in other format, it won't look right. Um, so you can see some different icons that I've brought in. Here's all the standard ones that it comes with right here. So you're going to put them in folder images. Okay. Then you also might be asking, well, where does all this great box art come from? I did 3D box art for all my systems, try to make it look consistent. I added RetroArch in here as standalone. Not a big fan of it. Actually, I created a custom icon for that. I'm about to show you what I did. I'll do that in a second here. See, so they're all 3D. So that's cancel this. Yeah, sure, save the folder structure. Alright, so I gotta change my icon for RetroArch. I built one. Uh, it's not the best. I did it real quick just as a proof of concept. RetroArch. Let's change this. Let's browse. Where the hell did I put that icon? Ah, oh, shit. I can't find it. Yeah, let's not worry about that right now. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Then you'll flash, synchronize. I uh, hope this answers some questions. My first video wasn't the cleanest thing in the world, but I hope this guy's helped you guys out. Take care.